If you'd like to get a video featured on the series, then just send me an email following the instructions on the screen. Essentially what it is, is that you guys can send me your submissions of your albums on khuxtracker.com containing all of your individual medals for me to look at. Ask me questions related to setups, and I'll personally go over in a video like this one, my thoughts and advice on creating the best setup solely based completely on what you have. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and for today's episode of the Kingdom Key series. Now, for today's video, we're it's going to be slightly different compared to the usual videos just because of the fact that uh, probably not going to really go as much over actual setups. Rather, I'm actually going to be answering some questions uh, that Can X Boys sent me in an email. Okay, so like this is his album right here or her. But they sent me an email right here and this is what they have to say. Hey there. I've been in the game for 15 days. It was supposed to be just for completing the mini games for the Starlight Keyblade for Kingdom Hearts 3, but it turns out I have not done anything else than play this darn game for two weeks. That being said, I am starting to hit a wall when it comes to PvP, PvE, or some expert challenges. I think my medals are decent, but I don't seem to understand some of the finer points of the game. For example, I just learned that there are special turtle medals that can help win the monthly gem challenge. My highest level Keyblade is Starlight at level 34. First of all, before I, I talk about the rest of this, Kana, I just want to say that you hardcore fell for the trap. Because <laughs> uh, quite literally, that's that's how they're trying to get you. That's the whole point of trying to have the mini games and stuff on the app itself is to try and lure people like you into starting to play this game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just because of the fact that this money is meant to try and take people's money, like straight up trying to take people's money. <laughs> That's why I'm calling it a trap. <laughs> but nonetheless, going on with your questions, uh, you ended up asking me, you, you actually listed quite a few of them over here. You have like four different questions. First of all, one thing I want to mention real quick is that I know you said that you do I like your email and stuff doesn't have to be featured in the video and you're fine with just a written response and stuff. Um, and I just want to let you and anybody else watching the series know, like, like I, as cool as I am, which is giving a written response, uh, the reality ends up being that I just simply don't have like enough time in the day to actually provide written responses to everybody, uh, let alone actually make videos for everybody, of course, too. Because realistically, even though like t uh, writing a written response isn't exactly, you know, that time consuming, it is time consuming when everybody is okay with the written response if that makes sense i'm not trying to see what you did is bad or anything okay by all means like what you said was totally fine i'm just letting everyone watching the video know like i am pretty busy and i to the point where i don't even have time to like write back to uh these type of emails all the time but at the very least that's what this series is for so that way i can at least like somewhat help you guys out individually uh on some level and then hopefully others that are watching the videos can learn from it too Okay, that's the whole point. But anyways, going back to your questions, actually answering your questions, uh, you asked about, I would like to beat Sephiroth at the Hades Cup in order to enter 13 medals, members, I mean, is there a way for my medals to do that? Okay, so the, the first thing I want to say real quick is that uh, I actually meant to make this video last week, uh, but obviously I, I couldn't and stuff. But I am doing it now, so we're trying to get to it. But because of that, though, obviously the Sephiroth and Hades Cup is pretty much already ending. If, if it hasn't ended already, I haven't checked yet. Um, so I can't exactly help you with that. However, what I can help you with, more or less, is the Organization 13 members, okay? Now, it's hard for me to actually provide, like, setups and stuff in terms of trying to beat the organization 13 members just because of the fact that each organization 13 member typically requires very different strategies and setups to beat each of them however there generally is a common theme between all of them in terms of the type of medals that you need uh the first of them being that you need medals who are able to avoid counters okay that like that don't decrease counters and just by looking at your album like as you guys can see right here uh you quite obviously have four of them right now <laughs> you have four of the foretellers and the foretellers as of right now anyways are currently the strongest aoe medals in the entire game which is a good start for you um and i believe from looking at the rest of your album you don't like those are the only medals you have towards beating the foretellers actually you, that's not true you have demix plus as well he avoids counters which is also nice uh, but i think he's the only other medal you have that like doesn't affect or like you know helps you out in terms of counters which is what you want now the four tellers uh do provide plus two counters which is great uh 
probably the biggest thing that might hurt you or maybe not hurt you but like you might want to focus on is trying to get some more like stronger single target ish type metals kind of like the boss Zemnis you mentioned earlier i don't see it right now there it is like this boss Zemnis. getting metals like this to seven star is probably a good idea in time because solely because of the fact that uh for these type of enemies organization 13 members you need some metals at the very least who can do like big bursts of damage uh, AOE medals like the Foretellers, although they are really good and they are the strongest AOE medals in the entire game, they are meant for AOE purposes, okay? So they'll help against members like Syax, for example, where we did have to fight like a bajillion Heartless alongside them or Norbodies alongside them, but against enemies such as like Lexius, for example, where it's just him, or Axel, where it's just him. Um, you need those bursts of damage metals that can like just chunk down a lot of his HP. So that's something you want to focus on. Uh, another thing you want to focus on too is trying to get metals with the minus 60 traits on them, specifically minus 60 defense. Out of both of the minus 60 traits, that is currently the best one by a landslide. And if we go ahead and sort your album real quick and we just take a look at the metals that even have minus 60 ground, right? You you only have a handful of metals that actually have those. Uh, a large part of them, like these guys right here, we're just gonna completely cross off because they're tier one and two metals. We don't care about those. We care about everything else. Uh, we're gonna cross off Vexen as well because he's basically just a pure turtle metal and he's also a six star, okay? So we're crossing him off. Uh, because of the fact you also have the foretellers, we're also gonna cross off your Kyrie EX. Uh, one, because of the fact that everything you're gonna, you have four foretellers. Like, it's not a problem for you to match, like get the right type of attributes and such. On top of the fact that they do more damage. The only reason you're gonna even want to run a Kyrie EX for like the foretellers, uh, for like a setup and stuff against organization 13 members is solely for the HP recovery, which is necessary on top of the fact that you would want to consider having like a second chance skill, having second chance on a metal in a setup against hard events, such as like organization 13 is pretty much a must have ability or skill. I should say, um, I know in the setup that you sent me, like this is currently, currently your best starlight setup. Let me put this up, uh, your best starlight setup. As of right now, as you could tell, there's you, you don't have a single metal in this setup that has second chance on it, okay? Uh, also, I would also state that you would w probably want to have a defense skill on your Demix instead of triple threat. I know triple threat is good for PvP, but uh, trust me, defense skills on turtle metals are 10 times better compared to any other skill. Um, now, Demix Plus is a bit of a conundrum just because of the fact he's also the strongest magic reverse damage metal in the entire game too. But for most people, I feel like uh, defense skills, using him as a pure defense metal is probably the way to go, to be honest. But regardless, it doesn't change the fact that you don't have a single metal in here that provides any second chance. So one thing that you could easily do to help out with setups against like Organization 13 members and stuff is simply replace the Demix Plus you have here with your Kari EX, uh, one for the plus one counter and two for the HP recovery and three if you choose to do so uh, for the second chance if you put second chance on your Kari. You don't have a Kari EX Plus that I can tell, so you're pr pretty much gonna want to rely on this Kyrie. Just as a reminder as well, in case you forgot and you're wondering like, well, why do we need the HP recovery? Well, uh, the Foretellers only do their max damage when you have higher HP. Okay, right there, higher HP. You need to have pretty much max HP in order to do max damage with the Foretellers. So you need metals like Kyrie EX in order to achieve that damage condition. But in terms of at least your Starlight setup, just just that right there, just replacing like Demix with your Kyrie EX alone would help out a lot. Um, granted, now that Demix isn't here, you're gonna be copying something else. Uh, so you might wanna figure that out. I would personally probably recommend something other than Shion copying Kyrie for that matter. One option is to simply put Gula over here in this slot instead. Not only would it actually do more damage, just because of the fact that slot four just has a higher multiplier compared to slot two, uh, but you'll also be doing a little bit extra damage because Shion will actually copy a high damage metal and such. And then you can just replace the Demix in the second slot right here with just carry EX instead. On to your next question, you asked, I'm going to get one tier eight blue fairy and one tier six blue fairy relatively soon, thus having five of each. Should I use my 
tier six and eight uh, fairies on, you know, Illustrated Aqua B or Demix slash Boss Semnus. Should I keep them for something else? Okay. So in regards to this, I don't know if you've actually achieved those uh, fairies already, but just for the sake of the video, let's just say you didn't. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at your album again. Now you said tier six and tier eight. So let's go look at tier six. Um, six star. All right. So you only have two tier six medals. One of them being Illustrated Aqua B. All right, both don't have traits, but only Illustrated Aqua B is guilty. All right, so not much too much said to be about too much about that to be said. Uh, I'll come back to that in a sec. Uh, let me take a look at your tier eight. So taking a look at tier eight, six star. We have Bazemnus, Demix Plus, Zexion Plus, and Vexen Plus. Okay, there's already a few issues that come to mind. Um, from looking at this from both the tier 8 and tier 6 uh, medals that you possess one You clearly don't have that many of either of them. You don't really have many if any options Towards wanting to evolve. Them. So let me start off with tier 6 in terms of tier 6 Let's go back to there. You only have Lark scene illustrated aqua B illustrated aqua B is currently one of the strongest tier 6 medals in the game Okay, so if you want to make her a six, a seven star medal, it's not a bad idea. Okay, and because of the fact I am not expecting any like tier six, any new tier six medals in quite a while. Okay, I know a lot of people are speculating that we might see like tier six prime medals, but personally, I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, just because of the fact that I kind of get the sense, like I, uh, someone mentioned it in my Discord, I believe. I don't remember who though. Someone mentioned in my Discord that. The prime medals kind of give a sense like the prime medals are meant for like beginners in a sense whereas like uh organization 13 medals for example are more for like the high-end uh veteran players if that makes sense so i the reason why i don't see any like prime tier six medals or even set of medals for that matter is going to be primarily because of the fact that of that really where in order to keep that separation of beginner and veteran type medals uh, there needs to be a like a line and I feel like the tier six is kind of that line like uh, Tier five might be the highest they go in terms of prime metals, but they probably won't go beyond that I'm pretty sure that after the prime metals are done for tier five They'll probably move on to like some uh, some entirely separate different series. We already saw supernova Severoff uh, Come out just like a day or so ago so they could very easily just start focusing on supernova metals from this point onwards after prime metals in terms of tier eight though the only real option I would consider evolving would be the boss Zemnus, but even then that's kind of eh. Um, the only thing that kind of redeems your boss Zemnus as a candidate for evol evolution though to tier uh, for 7 star is almost completely solely because of the minus 60 ground trait that you have right there. That ground trait alone is going to help you out a lot. So if you actually wanted to evolve your Zemnus, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Now, on another hand, because of the fact you really don't have that many tier 8 medals in the first place, it's not a bad idea to just hold on to them. Personally, I think for you, um, unless you're like seriously struggling with like these events and such, like these high tier events are, that, that have been coming out and such, uh, which I don't think you should be considering that you, you literally have some of like the best medals in the game already. If you can, considering the fact you're just a beginner like that's insane the fact you got four foretellers already within like the first month of you playing that's ridiculous <laughs> but nonetheless i think it wouldn't hurt just to wait a little bit just to see what at least like some of these other organization 13 members that are going to be coming out the next couple months are going to be before using your tier eights uh, especially because tier eights are kind of not like, not as hard anymore to get a hold of, but they can still be fairly difficult uh, for some players to accumulate. Um, because of the fact you really only have one option as of right now in terms of a decent tier 7, I mean 7 star medal. Personally, I might just lean towards holding on to your tier 8 fairies for now and see if anything better comes along the way. And then after a while, if still nothing decent has come along just yet, then I would say it'd be okay to evolve your boss summoners. Uh, but for now, I think... I think you might be better off just holding off on it for now. For your next question, you asked, do I have any reason to join a party? Now, the easiest answer to this question is yes. There are tons of benefits towards being in the party. 
Uh, the most obvious one being, and it, chances are you might already be in a party just before, before you, this video comes out, but just for the sake of, you know, going through your questions, I'm going to answer it. Um, but yes, being in a party is very useful. Um, one of them simply because of the fact you can actually use your friend medals in game uh, from your party members in order to help you out. Like you probably noticed just from doing regular missions and stuff, a bunch of medals pop up on the right hand side aside showing which type of you know like other people's medals for you to use if you're in a party most of those medals are going to come solely from your party so the higher level of like a party you are like the higher tier of a party you are the better those medals are going to become on top of the fact that if you're in a party uh, and there's a specific medal you would like to use whether it be for like high score challenges or raid bosses um whatever you can actually you know talk to your party members and ask them like yo does anybody have this medal for me to use can you share it um, in which case somebody like yeah brian i'd love to share this medal you're my bro okay we we have good times you can do stuff like that another obvious aspect as well is just simply being able to talk to your party members strategize um and get tips and stuff okay like just the just the communicative aspect alone is already like really valuable uh, another reason why you actually want to be involved in a party is because of the competitive weeks that will sometimes happen within the game um during competitive weeks such as like when you're raiding for example there will be prizes awarded for each party that falls within like certain tier brackets kind of like how in pvp there's like tier brackets and stuff same thing with these like week-long competitive weeks um raiding being the most obvious one because that's the one that happens most frequently uh, but every once in a while there are there will be like some other random like events involving your party uh in terms of rankings but like even just in terms of like raid week competitive weeks for example uh rewards for those can be like gems gems typically tend to show up in the reward section uh, for competitive weeks and those are long it's like hey like if you happen to get high enough in your party like with your party i mean like that's free gems for you to get like that's not like you're getting free gems for just playing the game like that's that's nice like you might as well be doing that Another reason as well, and this one could be kind of subjective depending on your uh, individual wants and needs and such, but another reason why I want to get involved with the party is because you want to start trying to like building up your resume as much as possible uh, for your character. Because if you end up taking the game more seriously as time goes along, um, you are probably going to be interested in joining better and better parties, like, you know, top tier parties such as mine, for example. My party is typically uh, top 10 when we actually, you know, try, or top 20 when we're feeling lazy. And the first thing that competitive party leaders tend to look at in terms of judging of whether or not you will be a good fit for joining our party is going to be like the first thing we're going to look at is your profile. And so quite literally your profile is basically like your resume, okay? And the best way to build up your resume is to join a party and try and get as high in the rankings as possible with your party because your profile does record your highest rankings for all modes, okay? And one of the main things that party leaders tend to look at uh, competitive party leaders, I should say, tend to look at is how high you've achieved before. Okay, like what's the highest rank you've achieved before in the past? For me, my highest my party has gone to has been sixth place. So if for whatever reason I decide to quit my party, stop being a YouTuber, and you know join like some or try to join like someone else's party, they'll be like, oh, holy crap, this guy is insane. He's been in a top six party and stuff like that. He's, <laughs> he has all this ridiculous stats. They'll see stuff like that. And like that, that helps you a lot. So um, being in a party definitely helps out in that aspect too. Another reason too, this one's the last one, uh, but it's not nearly as important, but there are some medals within the game whose damage is actually based off how big your party is as well. Uh, an easy example is... Uh, Prime Mr. Incredible, for example, okay? If you look at his damage condition, it's he does more damage with more party members, okay? And if you're by yourself, that's only going to count as a party of 1 out of 30. So it's going to do the minimum amount of damage, okay? So even just medals like this, you you want to be in a party and try to have as full of a party as possible. But yeah, in a nutshell, you definitely want to be in a party of some sort because the, the benefits 
involved are just way more are just way more beneficial than just trying to play the game by yourself even if you're just playing the game casually i highly recommend just joining a party there's plenty of like casual parties within the game as well that like i'm sure you could easily find a party that's well like that'll be more than welcome to accept you just to like have good times with you and such but last not least let's go ahead and take a look at your last question you said i'm currently grinding for level 350 which i also learned from one of my videos should i spend my jewels on metals should i pull for Shion and Kyrie from the top shelf should I buy the new avatar boards okay now I know this one because of the fact it took me a while to respond you know to your to your email and stuff for this video uh, like I said I meant to do this last week but at least in terms of this question this question's a little bit of a redundant thing because most 90% of the time you're going to be spending your jewels to pull for medals okay that's just kind of how the game is built um and in terms of this question this part of the question at least okay uh i can't give this one a straight yes or no or anything like that uh the best i can say is just simply uh keep up to date like if you if you want advice okay um if, if you're not going to ask like party members when you join party okay like their opinions um but you're going to like look at like my opinions for example whether or not to pull from medals and such uh, I highly re recommend just getting other people's opinions on what medals are worth pulling for and like from what banners, okay? Or um, if you like watching YouTubers such as myself, just simply wait for like one of my videos on whether or not I think it's worth pulling for those medals, okay? That, that That's pretty much the best way I can answer this question just because of the fact there's so many medals that will come out and each of them do different things. Um, and some are going to be worth pulling over others, um, and some just not at all. So th that one, th that's the kind of question that like is kind of just derived from how well do you know how to play the game? Um, so it it's that kind of thing. Uh, but in terms of this part right here, we said, should I pull for Shion and Kyrie from the top shelf? I, this one's kind of difficult just because of the fact that the chances of pulling something good from the top shelf at this point isn't the greatest um when it first came out it was it was pretty decent um but that but now that more and more medals have come out and are slowly being added to the pool of medals in the top shelf as well i would say only pull from the top shelf every once in a while like like i would say don't pull from the top shelf more than once a week and even just once a week is a bit much like if i were you maybe just like twice a month <laughs> should be a good amount just because of the fact of like how fast banners and good medals are coming out these days on top of the fact that you still have to try and save for avatar boards um and if needed even skills the thrills or random other stuff that comes out you, you kind of have to at this point in the time in the game um be very conservative with your jewels and chances are to like for things like Kyrie and shion the Kyrie and shion ex plus medals uh have already seen like a reprint banner within global and chances are we'll probably see their reprints again sometime fairly soon um, especially now that some of these busted metals like the stained glass and the foretellers are out already chances are they might come out with another reprint banner for that so so it might even be for the best to just hold on for your jewels and just wait for one of those to come along because right, those are better than just the normal Kyrie and shion ex um and last part of the question you said should i buy the new avatar boards i don't know at this point in time which avatar parts you are referring to chances are they might even be gone for all i know so i can't give any answers for that but other than that that was it for today guys i hoped that helps you out a lot uh kind of x boy uh, i know that was a lot of information uh i know this was a little bit different from the usual type of kingdom key video that i tend to do for you guys as well they typically tend to be more in terms of like how to build good setups and such okay but i do have no problem answering these type of questions as well like these this series is meant to help out like beginner and intermediate players so if you have questions about something by all means give like ask me now i'm not going to always do videos where i'm just answering questions like this but um i don't mind doing it every once in a while remember guys if you enjoyed the video if you're interested in joining being part of the series go ahead follow the instructions at the beginning of the video but other than that my name is brian from kinder martini cross nation and i will see you guys in the next video probably tomorrow peace